Parshas Tetzave, Tov Shin Ayin Hei. The Medrash Rabbah begins this week's Parsha with the words, Hahu Siv, the Parsha begins with Hashem telling Moshe Rabbeinu, you will instruct Bnei Yisrael about the lighting of the menorah in the Beis Hamikdosh, in the Mishkan in the Beis Hamikdosh. And the Medrash says, this is what the Pesach says in Yermia, chapter 11, Zayis Ra'anon, a fresh, juicy olive, Yefei Pri Toyar, a beautiful fruit, Koro Hashem Shmeich. Hashem has called you, the Jewish people, that's the name Hashem has given you. Hashem has named us, the Jewish people, we are Zayis Ranon. So the Medrash asks, V'chi loy nikru Yisrael elo kezayis hazeh belvad? Is that the only name that Hashem has given the Jewish people? Is that the only fruit He's compared us to? The Jews have been named and compared to many beautiful trees. There's a posseg gefen mi mitzrayim tasia that the Torah compares us to a grapevine. Hashem brought forth from Egypt a grapevine, and the Medrash says, why are we compared to a grapevine? That just like a grapevine, in order to advance, it wraps itself around a fence, so too we, the, and the fence is made out of wood that's not live wood, it's not growing, it's not attached to anything. So too we, the Jewish people, in order for us to advance, we wrap ourselves around those who have passed away already. We're dependent on the zechus of those who have passed away. We start our Shmon Esrei, Elokei Avroham, Elokei Yitzchok, Elokei that when we want to approach Hashem, we approach Hashem not just as individuals, as ourselves, but we're coming with a heritage. We're coming that we are the children, we are Maminim Bnei Maminim. We are the descendants of Avram Yitzchok Yaakov, the Shevaroyim, all the great Sadikim. And there's another passage that compares us to Te'eno, and like a Tomor, Zois Koimosek, Domsor, Somor, and Egos, all the different Pardes Srimoinim. So the Medrash says, And Yermia comes along and he gives us a new name, a new title. He's comparing us to the olive. However, there's something very extraordinary about the olive. While it's on the tree, they mark it. They mark because the olives don't all ripen at the same time. They ripen at different times. So each olive is treated as an individual. As soon as an olive starts ripening, they mark those that are ripe on this and this date, and the other ones that ripen a little later to know how to pick them. And then we take it off the tree, and it gets beaten. And once it gets its, its first beating, they bring it to the olive press, and they put it through a, a crushing process. And then they, they surround it with ropes, and they bring stones, and it's only after a whole several different processes of crushing and recrushing that it gives forth, it's the full measure of oil that it's supposed to, kach Yisrael, so to the Jewish people, boyen oivdei kechovim v'choivten oisam mimokom lamokoim. Different nations of the world come, and they kick us around from place to place. All different places that we've gone to, pushed around and kicked around, v'choivsen oisam b'koilorim, and just like the olives are tied up with ropes, the Jews get tied up with ropes at times and chains, and they surround us with all kinds of guards and everything. And the result of all of that is that those that are fortunate, unfortunately there are those that fall away in the process, but those that are privileged are through all of this crushing and beating and everything to come to tshuva. And Hashem responds to our tshuva, to our tefillah. Minayin, how do we know this? Shenemar, as the Pesach says, Vayayonchu b'nei Yisrael min ho'avoyta. That when the Jews were persecuted and, and enslaved in Egypt, what did they do? 
they groaned and moaned to Hashem. They reached out to Hashem. V'chein batzar lecho. When the Jews will feel crushed and tight, we're in a tight spot, that's when many of them find Hashem. Ki kel rachon Hashem alekecho. Sohoi zayis ranon yefei pritoyar. It's based on this that Yirmiyonov, he said, that we're compared to this beautiful olive that goes through this crushing process but in the end, comes through with the product. Now, Rab Nosenzal, in Likuti Halochis, in Orachayim Chelik Beis, Hilchas Betzias Hapas, Halocha Hei, Rab Nosenzal speaks, he touches on this week's Parsha, and he teaches us something extremely important in exactly how Hashem presents this, this mitzvah. Hashem says to Moshe Rabbeinu, the Ato and you, Titzaves B'nai Yisrael, instruct the Jewish people, we know, by the way, that this week's Parsha is unique, in that this week's Parsha is all about Moshe Rabbeinu. Who put the Mishkan together? Moshe Rabbeinu, uncontested. He had people working for him, he had architects, he had Betzalel, he had Oliov, but the Torah says clearly that Hashem instructed the Jews, everybody contributes, everybody gives, but Vayavihu HaMishkan El Moshe. All the ingredients for the Mishkan had to be brought to Moshe Rabbeinu. He is the only one who's qualified to put it together. And Rabbeinu Zal writes in Likut Imran, from here we learn, we know that our prayers today, today we don't have a Mishkan, we don't have a Beis HaMikdosh, we're told that the shuls, the Botei Kneisios and Botei Midrashos, are a stand-in for the Mishkan. Just like at that time, if a Jew wanted to contribute, he was allowed to contribute. If a Jew thought he was building the Mishkan by himself, he was out of bounds completely. The, the ingredients had to be brought to Moshe Rabbeinu, he built it. So too we today, when a Jew is mispalel, when a Jew says his tefillah, the majority of the Jewish people who daven, and they know I'm davening to Hashem, period. This is between me and Hashem, period. That's one of the reasons why their tefillahs are not that effective. It's bringing the ingredients and leaving Moshe Rabbeinu out of the equation. There's a hierarchy, there's a leadership in Klal Yisrael, there's a Moshe Rabbeinu. And I'm davening to Hashem, but I'm presenting my tefillah to Moshe Rabbeinu, to the tzaddik. They are the ones who will take my tefillah and to deliver it to make sure it gets to where it's supposed to get to, in order for it to be able to have the proper effects. Rabbi Nezal speaks about this in the second chapter of Likut Imran, and in fact, in Breslau, there's a custom that before we daven, we, we spell it out. We say, Hareini mekasher I'm making it perfectly clear that it's not me and Hashem, period, and I, I feel confident, I feel good enough, and the Gemara tells us thousands of things about us that could disqualify our tefillahs before we even start, before we open our mouths. There's all kinds of requirements. And it's only through the help and guidance of the tzaddikim, they have the ability to take even our tefillahs with all of our shortcomings, with all of our chesroinahs, and make it part of the package and see to it that it gets to where it's supposed to get to. It scores points. We know there's a concept, a person gets up to bat, he hits a single, a double, it. you look at the scoreboard, it's zero. Z what do you mean? The guy got it, he hit the ball. He did hit the ball. Did not score any points. In order to get points on that chart, it requires a certain distance, going a certain distance. The tzaddikim, the true tzaddikim, are the ones that are qualified, that know everything that a person needs to know about tefillah, about Torah, about Hashem. They know when the door is open and when the door is not open. The Gemara makes a statement that from the time of the Churban Beis Hamikdash, the gates of tefillah are closed. So we're starting out with that kind of welcome mat being put out by Hashem. Again, unfortunately, it's not Hashem's fault, it's our fault. Because of the things that we did to cause the Churban Beis Hamikdash, and the Gemara says, any person during whose lifetime the Beis HaMikdash is not being built, the implication is if it was standing right now, Hashem would take it down. Chas v'shalom. Do we know how to get that door open? And to make sure that our tefillah gets to where it's supposed to get to? This is why we see in the Shmon Esrei, right up front, Elokei Avroham, Elokei Yitzchok, Elokei We're mentioning the names of these tzaddikim, 
because these are keys. If we recognize that we're dependent on them, we mentioned before, Gefen mi Mitzrayim Tasia, we're compared to the grapevine, its whole growth is dependent on that fence, the dead wood, supposedly, the tzaddikim who have passed away. This is why we find, for example, Rosh Hashanah, which is called Yom Hadin, the Day of Judgment, which begins the 10 days of tshuva. The Shulchan Aruch says that on Erev Rosh Hashanah, before going into Rosh Hashanah, it's a custom to visit Kivrei Tzadikim or Kivrei Ovois to remind us how dependent we are on them, that we're not going into court by ourselves. We're bringing lawyers, attorneys. Who are the lawyers and attorneys? The Tzadikim who have passed away. Those Tzadikim who have passed away, we're pleading with them that they should represent us. They should, they should beseech Hashem on our behalf. And in order for our Torah and Tefillah to really be affected, it's dependent on the V'yikhu Eilecha, each and every Jew bringing his Shemen Zayisoch to Moshe Rabbeinu, to bring it to the Tzadik, to attach it to the Tzadik, and go through the Kos Islam oyer, go through the beatings that a person has to take in the process of coming close to Hashem or coming close to the Tzadik, and this will result in Lahalo Isner Tomid. This will bring forth that constant, consistent light to the Menorah. We should be zeicha. We're headed now towards Purim and Pesach times of Geula, and we know that one of the nicknames of the Shekhinah, the Spirit of Hashem, is called Gam. Gam means also. There's a pasuk ve'af Gam Zois behiyosam beretz oveim that even when the Jews will find themselves in the lands of our enemies, loy maastim v'loy galtim, Hashem says, "I'll never reject them. I'll always be with them." And the, the Zohar HaKadosh says that Gam, this also means that we're never alone. There's this also, there's this other one that's with us, which is the Shekhinah, the spirit of Hashem. It's brought that the word Gam represents the Geula in each case. When we went out of Mitzrayim, it was called Geulas Moshe. It was the Geula that was led by Moshe Rabbeinu. The Hanukkah that we celebrated, Geulas Matis Yohu. Purim, Geulas Mordechai, and the final Geulah that we're waiting for is going to be the Geulah of Moshiach, Moshiach ben David. We should be zeichet to remember the ways that we connect with Hashem individually, which is Torah and Tefillah, but not to leave out that critical ingredient of the connection to the Tzadikim, how dependent we are on their assistance. Benison Nigalu, we were taken out of Mitzrayim and Nisan, U Benison Asiden Ligoyl that Nisan is the opportune month of the year for Geula. Each month you start preparing 30 days before. The yard site of Moshe Rabbeinu, which is one of the few yard sites that's mentioned in the Gemara. The Gemara says Haman was excited when he saw that the lottery came out to the month of Ador for him to try to tackle, to eliminate Kalis from this month, because it's the month that we lost Moshe Rabbeinu, he thought. But the Gemara says he didn't know. He didn't know that when a tzaddik leaves the world, he's not leaving. He gets bigger, he gets double his power, and he's stronger. The Gemara says, G'doylem tzaddikim b'misosam yoyser mebichayim. Tzaddikim are more effective after their passing than during their lifetime. We should be zeichah that Moshe Rabbeinu and all the tzaddikim should do what they can do to put an end to this golos that Klal Yisrael is feeling, that each individual is feeling, and be zeichah to the gula shleimah, the mihirah, the aleinu, the